On release, the Latham was insane. It became the king of secondary weapons overnight. But not everything was hunky doru. You see, some of the incarnations were a bit bugged and did not function the way they were supposed to. Thankfully, that has been fixed. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be re diving deeper into the Latham. As per usual, I'm gonna have a build selection for you one crit, one non crit. Bear in mind, this is not a new player friendly weapon, so we're gonna jump straight into the end game setups. That said, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the Latum. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Latham is one of the original Incarnate weapons, and that means you're gonna have to go for headshots in order to get it charged. This is a projectile based attack with a slight projectile drop off and the travel speed by default is good. That means you shouldn't really have any issue in charging the weapon. However, she does kinda kick like a bloody mule, so there's that to bear in mind. With any level of Incarnate charge, you can access secondary fire mode and transform into Incarnate form. And in Incarnate form, this one goes absolutely nuclear. In essence, it's a primary of sort now, a rifle if you will, that fires once again a projectile based attack, but this time upon contact, they explode in a 2 meter radius with a drop off of 20%. That means what exactly? You got two sources of potentially applying damage, one the projectile making contact with a target, and two the explosion. The damage is split, 25% for the contact, 75% for the explosion. So are we going for headshots? Well, yes and no. If you can go for headshots, fine. If not, just use it like I use it as a carpet bomber because it is highly effective like that. We're looking at a critical chance of 22% with a 2.2x critical multiplier and 22% status chance. As for the damage types, you got impact on the projectile making physical contact with a target and the explosion itself is gonna be radiation damage. Radiation damage is fantastic if you're gonna be dealing with the murmur, Though, bear in mind that this brand new faction, the Murmur, has kind of a two-faction thing going on. You got the Murmur themselves, those rocky-looking things, which are vulnerable to radiation, but you also have the Necromex, which are vulnerable to corrosive. Our builds will center around the Murmur faction, since that's the latest and greatest faction. Now let's have a quick look at those incarnations or evolutions. Level 1 you can ignore. Level 2, we got ourselves minus 40% weapon recoil. Again, if you're having trouble charging the weapon, this will help you. My recommendation from a DPS perspective, obviously, is going to be Rapid Wrath, 20% fire rate. You also got Raptor's Chase, 50% movement speed when aiming. I don't know if anybody enjoys using this one, because while I'm going into aim mode, I try to get that headshot in normal form. My recommendation, again, is going to be Rapid Wrath. Lethal rearmament on headshot, 30% reload speed for 12 seconds, this one stacks up 3 times. Normally, if you're gonna be using this one as a carpet bomber, you should have lethal rearmament up 3x all the time. So what does reload speed do for me anyway, because I'm only interested in using this weapon in incarnate form. Basically, it speeds up the transition, the transformation from normal to incarnate, so definitely not worthless. What else we got? We got Awakened Readiness, 30% magazine reload per second when holstered. This is for you fantastic people that enjoy using multiple weapons throughout your missions. For example, you can wish and switch with your melee or with your glaive and then switch to the secondary weapon. Have it all ready to go. It's definitely a worthy option. And finally, we got Feather of Justice, gain 60% ammo efficiency while aim gliding and sliding. Not really, I don't really see a whole lot of value in this one, especially considering it only really applies to the normal form. In Incarnate form, you don't really get ammo efficiency anything, simply because the bullets or the ammunition in Incarnate form is treated as a charge, not actual ammunition. So bear that one in mind. Level 4, we got two fantastic options here, but first let's talk about Kaput Mortem. From a DPS perspective, you should really go for this one, 50% headshot damage. Are you that kind of guy that always goes for headshots? Definitely go for Kaput Mortem. If not, in my opinion, this is the smarter choice. Incarnate efficiency, headshots build 50% more incarnate transmutation charge. You're gonna have to go for headshots anyway in normal form to get that charge. With two shots, with full multi-shot stack, you're gonna be able to get yourself full charge. Try incarnate efficiency. This one is also fairly powerful in combination with the right level 5 talent. Elemental Excess, 20% status chance, minus 10% critical chance. And you know where this one is going, right? Da 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 ba -dum -pum. At the final tier or evolution 5, you have Devouring Attrition, 50% chance to deal 2000 plus 2000% damage 
on non-critical hits. So obviously, it's going to be synergizing beautifully well with Elemental Excess. The problem with this one, while mathematically speaking, this will provide the greatest damage benefit, it doesn't do anything to Acolytes or the bosses. So there is that to bear in mind. Here's another fantastic, fantastic, yes, fantastic option. Overwhelming attrition. On hit that is neither critical nor applies a status effect, you get 400% damage for 10 seconds. This one stacks up three times. It's important to understand how this one works. I want you to think of this as an arcane. So you see that on hit neither crit nor applies a status effect. That's just a trigger. You're going to be able to get that buff 100% of the time, fully stacked without any issue whatsoever, as I will demonstrate in gameplay. And finally, Reaper's Plenty. On headshot, 40% ammo efficiency for 6 seconds. We already went over this and the whole ammo efficiency thing, yes? Since we're not getting the ammo efficiency in incarnate form, we don't really care. So let's make things very, very simple. You're gonna go for Devouring Attrition for a non-crit build. As for a crit build, you're gonna go for Overwhelming Attrition. Let's show off the crit build first, then we're gonna switch to non-crit, yes? So that means if I'm critting, I'm not gonna be going for elemental excess. Instead, I'm gonna stick to the all tried and true incarnate efficiency. How does the actual build work, however? How does it look? Well, something like this. We got Lethal Torrent, Galvanized Diffusion, Prime, Target Cracker, Prime, Pistol Gambit. Whoa, 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 whoa. If this is a crit build, what is a creeping bullseye? Well, the difference between Prime Pistol Gambit and creeping bullseye is essentially 2.9 let me check 2.9 percent extra crit so we go from 63.1 to 66 so that is actually 2.9 percent in my opinion it's not worth the sacrifice i would not sacrifice uh 20 fire rate for 2.9 percent extra crit also what you gotta bear in mind is that you can go overboard with a crit build on the latum simply because if you go to 100% so all your shots are crits that means you're not triggering that level 5 perk anymore so if you're gonna be going from prime pistol gambit on the weapon make sure you do not use arcane avenger alternatively you can use arcane avenger and use another mod on the weapon again you don't want all of your hits to be crits because then overwhelming attrition will not proc we also got Prime Convulsion, Prime Heated Charge. Yes, my friends, we do not care for a million status procs. Accelerated Isotope, one of the brand new mwah, beautiful mods introduced with the... What's it called? Whispers in the Wall expansion and, of course, Pistol Pestilence. Yes, you can Forma one more time and use the 90 mod instead. And considering what kind of damage we're doing, boys, Heat Radiation Corrosive. What more do you want for? And, of course, Cascadia Flare, which will grant us a massive 480% flat damage. You can go for Deadhead as well if you want to. And you can also go for Merciless. Lethal Momentum in the Excellent slot is optional and down to you. But from my point of view, that is definitely the way to go. Now to prove a point, no build here and nothing to skew my test results. What we're gonna be spawning is a mixture of targets. The fan favorite, Corrupted Heavy Goons, Rokal Irvin and the Hollowed Vein representing the brand new faction, level 180 with the Steel Path modifier enabled. Now let's see what this puppy can do against some rather tough targets. Where are those Corrupted Heavy Goons? A couple of headshots, look at that. So no multi-shot stack, two shots, I'm at 80% incarnate charge. This is what I'm saying about that level 4 or level 3 incarnation. It's absolutely glorious. Just how the performance is on this beautiful weapon. And if you take a look at my buff, they're already fully stacked. God damn, that is definitely satisfying. But you might say, hold on, shoot something which is more beefy. That is a hollowed vein. That was a hollowed vein. And as you know, hollowed veins are quite the beefy target. But of course, these are still standing still targets in the simulacrum, yada yada, etc. Welcome to the void. This is not the void. Welcome to Deimos, my friends. We're going to be fighting that fantastic new faction. Yes, we're talking about the Murmur. This is a survival steel path enabled and we're going to be playing Citrine. Now, you might be curious, what do you have on your Citrine? Well, it's my standard Citrine build if you want to know more about it. Link the cards right now. As for a primer, we have the Diriga, the best primer in the game. Now, let's see how the weapon handles. Look at that. Charge is ready already. That's why I love that talent. That's it. I'm on a roll. I don't need a minute or anything of the sort to absolutely nuke whatever stands before me, my friends. And I know the word nuke has been way too often used in builds, but this is definitely absolutely nuking the targets. And this is the kind of performance you can expect out of the weapon. But of course, just 30 seconds of gameplay will not suffice, will not suffice. So I'm going to show you more while I keep blabbering on about the weapon. Listen, this is one of the three best secondary weapons in the game. I was about to say primary, that would be wrong. 
You also gotta look at two others, but I will save those for later. For the time being, what you gotta take away is this is an amazing weapon, one that I highly recommend to just about anybody. Anybody that wants a secondary weapon to, you know, actually deal damage and kill stuff. If that's not what you're interested in, then have a look at my top 10 primary weapons in Warframe. Link will be in the card right now. But until then, my friends, highly bloody satisfying. I absolutely love playing with this weapon. And true, there are other weapons which are powerful in this game, but every single time I go back to the Latham, I get what I'm after. And it's not top DPS, best weapon in the game, bro. It's enter freaking entertainment, since that is always my priority for Warframe. But enough of blabbering, let's see some Acolyte performance, shall we? Where are you at? What is that? Misery? Violence. Violence is here. Come at me. There it is. I think it's there. There it is. Shield is gone and absolutely annihilated without any issue whatsoever. Keep in mind, this is the crit variant of the build. But enough about crit, let's say you don't want to crit anymore, then you switch to elemental excess and at level 5 you switch to devouring attrition. As for the actual build changes, well, there's really not a whole lot you need to change, just simply get rid of the crit. Now, do bear in mind there's a lot of plat damage on this one, simply because we're going to be testing on a mixture of factions. But if you're not going to be testing on a mixture of faction, if you know what you're going to be fighting, for the optimal amount of damage, yeah, 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 you should be using something like a faction mod. For the time being, no faction the mod. Just a couple of headshots to give myself that fantastic incarnate charge. I'm not going to wait for full. And now... Yes, my friends, this is the non-crit build. Oli Oli Accent Spree! It is that good. It is that powerful. And yes, my friends, not even the mighty Hollowed Vein can stand before this beautiful weapon. Funny, I could have swore we were here a moment ago. Anyway, this is the non-crit build. Let's see how this one performs against the exact same targets as earlier. Get me that charge. Please. It's always a diff... Oh, wait. Is that the guy with the legs? If you find the guy with the legs, the guy with the legs is easy to get incarnate charge on. If not, the Rokulurvin are actually a pain to get a charge off of them. So just find the guy with the legs. 50%? Not fantastic. But it's going to be more than plenty to absolutely clear whatever stands before me in a room. As you can plainly see. Now, of course, you're wondering, hold on, if this one performs so well and the other one performs so well, then which is the best build? I just want the best build because I'm a damage whore. <laughs> well, in that case, you got to keep in mind that a non-damage build such as this one is not really going to be as good when it comes to dealing with boxes, aka acolytes. So if dealing with acolytes is a thing you want to do, then you should be going for the crit build. Not dealing with acolytes, go for the non-crit build and non-bosses in general, because that final talent, that 2000% thing, simply does not apply to bosses. So bear that one in mind. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean on Acolyte performance. Honestly, initially, I thought David Attenborough was doing the fish, but then I realized David Attenborough is not fucking annoying like this fish, so... Full charge, here he comes, right down the middle. I think he's there. I don't know. Yeah, I'm hitting something. He just went through me. And again. I got you, buddy. I almost got you. There you go. That's Acolyte performance with a non-crit build. What can I tell you guys? Is it fantastic? No, but you can still get the job done, at least for base level skill path. Now it's time to draw some conclusions on the Latham. And it's pretty simple on this one. This is one of the best secondary weapons in the game, no questions about it. The Big Free, the Incarnate Lex, the Incarnate Latham, and the Incarnate Dual Toxicist. Have at it, my friends, and enjoy the game. Any one of these three weapons will absolutely nuke Warframe without any problem whatsoever. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. You can also find me on Twitch, which is where I am now doing this vid. Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. But tell you what, if you enjoy tech things like I love tech things, then you can also find me on Texar. It's a really small channel where I try really hard to do tech things because I love tech. So why don't you subscribe for more Lazar, but on tech there. That's one long ass outro. See you guys in the next one. Bye.